Hey everyone, inside this video we're going to be talking about exactly what you need to do to pass EMT school on easy mode. Let's dive into it. Hey everyone, this is the Paramedic Coach and welcome to my channel. Uh, if you're new here, make sure to hit like and subscribe down below and let's dive into it. Let's talk about the exact steps in order to pass EMT school. So first, I want to welcome you to the profession. I want to welcome you into EMS. So the first rank in the ambulance is an EMT. Now, right now, maybe you're watching this video because you're pre-nursing or pre-PA. Maybe you're trying to make a career out of EMS, or maybe you're trying to get into a fire department, or you're getting your EMT cert to upgrade another career. Regardless of the reason why, uh, I want to congratulate you on getting into EMS. Now, the first thing I'm going to share with you is this. The earlier you prepare and you prep for EMT school, the easier it will be. Something you never want to do, and I hope you can hear me on this, is you never want to learn something from scratch. You never want to learn something for the first time in front of you. So let's say, for example, when I went to EMT school, I didn't have a mentor. Um, I didn't have this YouTube channel, right? I didn't have the paramedic coach programs. I didn't have these courses. I didn't have a mentor. So when I went into EMT school, I went in blind. And when I went in blind, what happened was I didn't prepare. Like a lot of EMT students don't prepare. And if you don't prepare for class beforehand, you're seeing information for the first time. So for example, if you've never taken a blood pressure before, if you've never uh, taken a pulse before, if you don't know the main pulse points, if you don't know the, the, the main functions of the body, where everything's located in the body, right? The main tools that you, you may use. As an EMT, you wanna do the best prep work you can. So that's number one. So you wanna go into the class knowing a few core things. I'm gonna give you a few of them right now. Here they are. First, I highly recommend that you learn how to take a blood pressure, how to take a pulse, how to count respirations, okay? And also understand well, how do we use a glucometer, right? What, what are the different oxygen levels in the ambulance? So that's a lot of stuff. So let's break it down quickly, okay? So the main facets that you wanna do which are about how to pass EMT school if you know your vital signs cold, if you know that you know the normal blood pressure in an adult is you know 120 over 80, you know if you know 140 over 90 is kind of high, 200 over 100 is really high, you know you need at least a top number of 90 in order to perfuse or bring blood to all your organs. The next thing I would say is learning your pul your pulse rates. I'll share them with you right now. So we talk about our pulse rates. Well, the normal pulse rate, guys, in an adult is gonna be 60 to 100, right? Someone who's a runner, okay, like myself, you might have a, a, a resting heart rate in the 40s or 50s. That's considered slow, but if you're healthy, nothing wrong with that, right? Now, a slow heart rate is considered anything under 60. A fast heart rate is over 100, right? So again, let's talk about it. 60 to 100, normal. Okay, anything under 60, well, it's slow. The question is, are you an athlete or not? You're not an athlete, that's ah, probably a bad sign. Well, what about too fast? Well, 200's life-threatening. 130, 120, maybe you're in pain, maybe you're working out, right? Maybe you have anxiety, okay? These are quick things to know. You can going in, what else? What's a normal respiratory rate? Well, the respiratory rate of a normal adult is 12 to 20. Okay, if I'm over, if I'm 20 or 30, I'm going a little fast. Anything over 30, way too fast. Okay, what about too slow? Anyone who breathes too slow, we help them breathe. Anyone who breathes too slow, we help them breathe. Okay, um, so that's it. Now, how do we help them breathe? Well, we got to give them oxygen, number one. And number two, we have a device called a BVM, a bag valve mask, that helps the patient breathe because they're breathing too slow. But what if they just need oxygen? Well, if they're breathing okay, but they just need oxygen, we can give them nasal oxygen if they just need a little bit, or if they need a lot, then we give them a non-rebreather mask, a face mask of oxygen, okay? 
See, just knowing these things, I didn't know any of this going into EMT school. What else? Well, what about blood sugar? How do you think of blood sugar, right? You wipe the site, you poke the site, okay? You then put through your strip into the little machine, you then collect the sample, you look at the machine, it tells you a number, you put a bandit on their finger. That's how you do it. You just learned, okay? Now, what is a normal blood sugar? Well, a normal blood sugar or blood glucose in medicine is at around 80 to 120. 80 to 120 is normal. 70 to 120 is fine as well. If somebody gets under 60, they're in trouble. You're under 60, you're in trouble. If you're, let's say you're over 200, you're too high. Over 200, you're too high. Over, you know, three, four, 500, you're real high, okay? Now you know the numbers, see? So that alone, I just told you, you're more prepared than 95% of the people walking to class on day one, and that's why the failure rates in EMT is so high, okay? The second reason why and how we can prepare for EMT school is how you study. Now, I wanna share something with you. Most people don't study well with textbooks. Most people study better with audio and video. Now, I wanna tell you why this is. We live in America a very busy life. We have families, we have friends, we may have kids, we have other responsibilities, we work a lot, right? We have passions, we do, we have a lifestyle we live. And the thing is this, guys, and I hope you hear me on this, listen, exactly how you're gonna study for EMT school. When I was in paramedic school, which is a higher level of education, I not once, even though my instructors told me to, I not once opened the textbook. I actually learned, and thank God, I had a great instructor in paramedic school. Not everyone is blessed with a great instructor. Shout out to Mr. Talbert, an incredible instructor, incredible, incredible medic and instructor. And when I had him as an instructor, I would audio record his lectures and I would drive around in my car and I would listen to the lectures. The problem is not everybody may be blessed with a great lecturer. But here's what I can tell you. I highly recommend audio and video. Here's why. Remember, you are gonna be moving fast. So audio, when I'm working out, I can listen, okay? When I'm driving in the car and commuting, I can listen. Driving to work, driving to get, my, driving to get kids, driving to get anybody, okay? I can listen, I can study. You can study the whole day. You're cooking, audio. You have headphones, put them on, right? So all day you're studying without actively studying, but your brain's soaking information. I highly recommend audio, okay? Now the other part is video. Well think about it, you're watching this video right now. How many videos have you watched in the last 24 hours? If you've watched a lot of videos, you're obviously processing information heavily off videos, okay? This is why any program that's audio and video is king, in my opinion because a lot of people are visual learners and a lot of people are auditory learners as well, okay? But not many people can read you know, a, a 12,000 page textbook in one sitting and absorb it, right? And, and there's nothing wrong with it, the textbook, a lot of great information in there, but it may not be your best tool, your best weapon in a fast paced learning environment like EMT and med school. This is a fast paced learning environment so keep that tip in mind. Number three, going uh, to an EMS base and doing a, a shadow. Uh, if you're able to shadow for the day uh, uh, an EMT or a medic to see what the inside of the ambulance is like, to touch and play with some of the materials. If you're able to uh, volunteer uh, while or before you go to EMT school, you're gonna have an awareness. Maybe you're, okay, maybe you're just, you're, you're a civilian, but you're, you're, you're helping out a volunteer company uh, where you live. It could be ambulance corps or, or, or fire EMS base, whatever it may be. But you're getting to see the equipment and you're getting to learn from a few other people that are around you. That's going to help you tremendously. You're going to have an, an awareness of it. You're not going to be shell shocked day one. You're not going to be touching a stretcher for the first time. The number one problem people make in school is they go in with no awareness right that's why in college and in schools they have prerequisites because what that means they're trying to give you a, the best chance to pass that class 
The problem is with EMT education, it's entry level, but it's not entry level. You see where I'm going with this? It's a lot of stuff and it's a fast paced moving class. So the best thing you can do is prep yourself beforehand. Now, I'm gonna give you one final tip here is to learn the different most common emergencies. Do you know what a heart attack presents like? Do you know what a stroke looks like? Do you know what an asthma attack looks like? What, about, what is anaphylaxis? What does a bad allergic reaction look like, right? What is hepatitis, appendicitis, right? What, what are the signs and symptoms of shock? What do I, where would you learn all this? Well, I'll tell you my story. I had a predicament when I wanted to learn all this back when I was first starting off in EMS. And you know, I was scouring the internet, YouTube, Google, and I was picking up a little piece here, a little piece here, and a little piece here. So here's what I did. I created my own program to put all this prep material in one single place and in the same exact place as a prep material that's gonna help you pass school is the same material that's gonna help you in school and the same exact material that's gonna help you pass your boards all in one place. So it's a one-stop shop for your EMT education. All right, now, the link down below, you click the link, okay, and it applies to EMTs, AEMTs, and medics. Every single provider level is inside this program. So click the link in the description down below, and you will see testimonials from our students who have gone through this, and believe me on this, everything that I talked about for you to get prepared for EMT school is in this program. You will be a rock star in your EMT class because you'll be so much more prepared for class and your boards with the program down below. Stay tuned to my YouTube. There's a ton of gold on here as well. And guys, I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. I'm gonna let you guys know that uh, this was everything I was searching for the whole time. The first couple of videos I watched, um, what I noticed, it just I, I just immediately started connecting dots.